This is a brief introduction to a program that will compute effect sizes for studies that employed multi-level designs. The program was developed with funding from the IES, and the program officer for this project was Dr. Edward Metz. Whenever we perform a study to assess the impact of an intervention, we want to compute an effect size. And in education, this is usually the standardized mean difference, D. This index is uniquely useful because it is independent of the outcome used and also of the study design. Thus, it allows us to compare the impact of two interventions, even if one used the SAT and the other used the ACT as the outcome. And it allows us to compare the impact of two interventions, even if one used a simple randomized trial and the other used a cluster randomized trial. However, this only works if D is computed correctly. For example, consider a study where students are assigned to either the treated or control groups. The mean difference between groups is 50 points. The standard deviation within groups is 100 points. So the effect size D should be computed as 50 over 100, or 0 0.50, regardless of the study design. In practice, however, the effect size may be computed incorrectly. If the study employed students within classes and compares classes, the analysis will be based on the standard deviation of the class means, which may be 50. This would yield an effect size of 50 over 50, or 1.0. Or, if the study employed students within classes within schools and compares schools, the analysis will be based on the standard deviation of the school means, which may be 25. This would yield an effect size of 50 over 25, or 2.0. Thus, if the actual effect size is identical in all three studies, the computed effect size would be 0 0.50 in one study, 1.0 in the second, and 2.0 in the third. If we had tested one intervention in the first study, a second intervention in the second study, and a third intervention in the third study, we would conclude that the third inter intervention was four times as effective as the first when in fact they were equally effective. This is the problem that we need to address. If we define D as the mean difference divided by the standard deviation for students, then we need a mechanism to compute the effect size based on this definition regardless of the study design. This mechanism would allow us to enter the data reported for any of the study designs and compute the intended effect size, which here is 0.50 for all three cases. These issues are discussed in the paper, Effect Sizes and Cluster Randomized Designs by Larry Hedges, published in the Journal of Educational and Behavioral Statistics and also in a series of related papers. They're also explored in a chapter published in the Handbook of Research Synthesis and Meta-Analysis. This program is based on those formulas. Now let's have a look at the program. When the program opens up, it looks something like this. There's a uh, wizard that says, welcome. The current study design is shown on the panel at left. And this interactive guide will help you select the design that corresponds to your study. And over here, we're looking at a two-level design where classes are randomized and students are nested. Classes randomized, students are nested. And we're looking at an analysis where we compared subjects and ignored the clustering. By using this wizard, we're going to be able to change this design so that it matches the design that we actually used in our analysis. I'll click Next. And over here, I have the opportunity to say whether we're working with a two-level design or a three-level design. I'm going to choose three. And now the program shows me a design where we have students nested within classes, nested within schools, and schools are randomized. The next thing that we want to do is to name the levels. By default, we're looking at schools, classes, and students. But I can use any names that I want. For example, I might decide to use districts, schools, and classes. Of course, as soon as I enter the names over here, they're applied over here and carried through to all subsequent frames in the analysis. The next thing that I want to do is to specify the level of randomization. At the moment, we're assuming that we randomized schools but I can click Randomized Classes, and as soon as I do that, we see that schools are blocked, 
classes are randomized and students are nested. Or I can say that I randomized students, in which case schools are blocked, classes are blocked, and students are randomized. I'm going to come back to the situation where I randomized schools. I'm going to click Next. And at this point, we get to choose what kind of analysis was done for this design. Uh, I can say that I ignored clusters, that I analyzed clusters, or that I used an HLM analysis. And I'm going to say that I analyzed the clusters. And the program presents me with this screen, which corresponds to this particular design. Uh, I can do some further uh, modifications over here. For example, the program is assuming that I actually entered the F value from this analysis, but I can say that what I want to do is to enter the means and standard deviations. And the next thing that I can do is, since I'm using this for a demonstration, I can actually populate this with sample data that corresponds to the uh, manual that is distributed with the program. So I can come over here and say, help, I want to populate this with sample data. And I'm looking at a uh, hypothetical study where the treated group has a mean of 25, the control group has a mean of 22.5, the standard deviation is 2.5 and 2.5, and then I have the number of schools, the classes within schools, the students within classes, and then the ICC for schools and the ICC for classes. At this point, I click Compute. And the program computes for me all of the relevant statistics. So for example, the standardized mean difference D is around 0.5 with a variance of 0.06. I also get the standard error, the lower and upper limit for D, the Z value, and the P value. You'll notice, by the way, that the correct D value is 0.49 or around 0.5. The naive D value, had I computed this using the mechanisms that are often used, would have been 1.0. So the correct D value is quite different from the one that would be computed if we did not take all of this into account. Uh, similarly, the correct estimate of the variance is 0.06, whereas the naive estimate of the variance in this example is 0.22. Um, so this is the way the program um, works. Um, thanks for taking the time to have a look. If you'd like more information, please feel free to contact me. My name is Michael Borenstein. And my email is biostat100 at gmail.com.